All right, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. My name is Julie Olson. I am the Associate Director for Pre-Professional Advising for the Creighton Edge, and I'm joined by my colleague, Jeremy Fisher, and Jeremy is the Director of the Safety Career Center here at Creighton as well. So we're excited to have all of you join us this afternoon. We are very excited to welcome your students to campus this fall. Um, this afternoon, our session is a little bit about what the Creighton Edge is, and then more specifically about two pieces of the Edge, which are Pre-Professional Advising and then the Career and Professional Development Center. First, I want to talk about just what the Creighton Edge is. A common question we get is, what exactly is the Edge? I don't really understand what the Edge is, or how does it work? So the Creighton Edge is a collection of services that have been brought together underneath one, kind of one umbrella, or one heading. And those services are in three areas. One is academic success, the second one is pre-professional advising, and the third one is career and professional development. And these three services were all brought together as one to work as one team because all three of us really have the same ultimate goal. All three of us are helping students move towards whatever it is that their professional goals are. Whether your student is looking to go on to professional school after they finish their undergraduate experience, whether they're looking to enter the workforce directly, whether they wish to do maybe some years of volunteer service like Teach for America, Jesuit Volunteer Corps, all three of our programs are helping students move towards that professional goal and helping them get to that point. So that's kind of why we were all brought together to work together is as really one big team. The first piece of the edge is academic success. I wanted to touch just briefly on academic success. Our academic success folks do have a full session this afternoon as well. It's called Keys to Success Family Edition. So if you wanted to go kind of more in depth on the academic success piece, I'd encourage you to go to that session as well. We are recording the sessions also, so if you can't get to it this afternoon, you can always watch it online later to kind of get more details about the academic success piece. Also. But just kind of some quick touch points on it. Our academic success part portion includes tutoring. And our tutoring program here at Creighton is really very robust. Um, we had over 7,000 visits to our tutoring center last year in the EDGE, um, so it's very heavily used by our students. And I always encourage students to really think about tutoring as being an additional tool in your study toolbox. It's about an additional resource available to help you better comprehend the material, to better master the material as you move on to more advanced classes. So tutoring is really a, a wonderful study resource for students. There are several different um, styles of tutoring we have here at Creighton, one of which is drop-in tutoring. So our drop-in tutoring program is for chemistry, biology, and math, those three subjects. It happens five nights a week, Sunday through Thursday, from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. So Sunday night through Thursday night from 6 to 9 p.m. in the edge, we always have tutors available for biology, chemistry, and math. So that one's always available for drop-in five nights a week. We also have one-on-one -on -one tutoring, and the one-on-one -on -one tutoring is available for pretty much any subject a student would take in their freshman and into their sophomore years. So if you have a student who's looking for some tutoring for things like perhaps philosophy, perhaps a foreign language, perhaps economics, they can go online to the Academic Success website, which is just success.creighton.edu, and they can sign up for a tutoring appointment in whatever subject they're looking for assistance with as well. So that's our one-on-one -on -one tutoring. We also have attached tutoring, and also what's called supplemental instruction, or SI. And attached tutoring, attached tutoring and SI are a little bit different in that your tutor for those programs has taken the class, they've taken the class and done well in it, but now as part of their role as a tutor, they actually are actually in the class with your students. They're actually sitting in class with the students, hearing the lecture again, hearing what the professor says on a day-to-day -day basis. And they run a couple of specific study sessions outside of classes based upon that content. So that's a great program as well because those tutors have actually heard the actual lecture, what the professors are actually talking about, and can go deeper into some of those topics as well. So that's just a bit about our tutoring program. A second piece of academic success is what's called academic coaching. And academic coaching is with our professional staff members in the Creighton Edge or academic coaches. And they are available to sit down and visit with students about really a wide variety of academic topics. So it could be questions about things like time management or some good study skills or good study strategies. It could be questions about test anxiety. But they're there to visit one-on-one -on -one with students and offer some suggestions and guidance and some good things to employ in their academics here at Creighton. One common question we get from students or common challenge students face here at Creighton their first semester is that time management piece. Oftentimes students come into college and they're used to a, a high school system where perhaps they had classes you know, from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Monday through Friday. Their day was pretty structured. And they get to college and they find that perhaps on Tuesdays, for example, they only have two hours of class a day. So how do they structure that free time? How do they make the most of when it is that they study the best? And how can they create those schedules? So an academic coach can sit down one-on-one -on -one with your student to kind of map out a good strategy for them for their classes and good, good schedule for them for their studying for the, for the semester. They also do quite a bit of programming as well throughout the year and I put just a couple of examples up here some good ones for our freshman students. Um, one is called Hippocampus 
And Hippocampus happens in September. It's the four Wednesdays that happen in September for one hour each night, those four Wednesdays. And each week covers a different topic on learning. And it's just meant to help our freshman students get some good skills, get some good study strategies, and some good learning skills to employ in their classes that first semester. So Hippocampus <coughs> is a great, a great program. We also have what's called Bio Boot Camp, and that happens also in September. And that happens typically on a Friday afternoon, and it's really designed for students who are in general biology this first semester. And it really gives them some suggestions on how to approach their biology homework, how to prepare for that first biology exam, and just ways to be successful in that general biology class also. So that's, once again, just a very quick snapshot for academic success. Once again, if you want to learn more, they had that session called Keys to Success. So I'd encourage you to stop by or watch it online later as well. Any questions about the academic success piece before I... Okay. So the second piece of the EDGE is the pre-professional advising piece. And this is the area that I work in specifically within the EDGE as well. And our pre-professional advising piece is designed for students who wish to pursue a professional program in health sciences or law following their undergraduate experience. So that would include things like pre-medicine, pre-dentistry, pre-law, pre-pharmacy, pre-physical therapy, pre-occupational therapy, we can kind of keep going on with all the pre's. Um, but our pre-professional advising is really designed to really do three things for students, to help them to explore their options for careers in health and law, to help them get some experience in those professions, kind of try it out, see if it's the right fit for them, and to also help them finally prepare for the actual application process for that particular professional program as well. So those are really the goals that we're trying to accomplish in the pre-professional advising. We do that really through kind of two main avenues, um, the first of which is individual pre-professional advising. And I always want to stress at this point, all students here at Creighton have a faculty academic advisor. So your students, when they come to Creighton this fall, are all going to be in a class called RSP, which is our freshman seminar here at Creighton. And your student's RSP instructor will be their first academic advisor here at Creighton. It's a faculty member who will spend their freshman and sophomore years helping them pick their classes every semester, meet with them at least once a semester about their class registration, make sure they're on track for the core requirements, your major requirements, minor requirements. That individual will help them through their freshman and sophomore years. In their sophomore year, your students will declare their major. And they'll, at that point, they'll be assigned to a faculty advisor within their major. Whether it's biology, chemistry, psychology, history, business, they will have a faculty advisor within their major that takes them through their junior and senior years to once again make sure they're on track for the core requirements, majors, minors, and those topics as well. The pre-professional advisors are here. We're kind of bonus advisors. We're extra advisors. So we're here in addition to their regular academic advisor. And we're here to offer specific support for the pre-health and the pre-law path. So perhaps some of those more in-depth questions, perhaps that deeper dive on the pre-health and pre-law areas, students can come in and see a pre-professional advisor about to get more specific guidance in those particular areas as well. We're available to visit with students one-on-one -on -one by appointment or by walking, whatever works the best for students. They can come see us every semester, they can come see us once a year, they can come see me every couple months if they like, whatever works the best for them or whenever they have questions for us. So we're happy to sit down with them and answer those questions. The second which way in which we do the pre-professional advising is through our learning communities. And our learning communities were created really for a couple purposes. Um, one, of, one way in which it helps us is it helps us to bring together students who have a common interest. So it gives us a way to bring together all those students who have a pre-health interest or a pre-law interest so they can meet one another and connect with classmates who have a similar interest. So that's kind of the first reason. The other reason is it also gives us set checkpoints with those students every semester. So that way we're having places where we're checking with those pre-professional students each semester to make sure they're on track for their goals for professional school and they're doing the things that they need to be doing to get to that professional school point. Our communities are zero credit seminars, so they're on the student's transcript, but zero credits. They don't impact GPA, don't impact total credit hours. Um, and we have about online modules and about three to four class meetings each semester. So very minimal time commitment, but once again, it gives us those set checkpoints with students each semester. But those communities really give us a structured way to help students to explore the profession, get experience in the profession, and then prepare for the application process. So kind of more about the community specifically. So for our pre-professional students, the freshman year communities are the pre-health information community and the pre-law information community. In the freshman year, our focus in our communities is really on helping students to explore the profession. So how can we help students to explore what their options are in the health sciences or in law, what kind of careers are available, what it takes to get to those careers. So in the freshman year, these are just online groups. So there's no required class meetings the freshman year. We really want students just to settle into their classes their freshman year and transition to college. But we also want to make sure that they have the information available to them. So this is just an online group in the freshman year. The online group will have different online models and resources available to guide students on the pre-professional areas. 
And then more importantly, we'll also share announcements about different events that are occurring to help them to explore the profession. So we'll do a number of different things throughout the year. So for example, we do a big pharmacy skills immersion lab where they can explore 30 different types of pharmacy <coughs> professions. Um, we'll do a tours of the PT and the OT labs here at Creighton. Our medical school does a big open house. Our law school does a big student panel. And so we'll make sure to share those events with students in these groups so they can come take advantage of those and learn more about the professions as well. With these groups, I should also mention, if your student mentioned a pre-health or a pre-law interest in their admissions application, we will actually automatically put them in these groups the first week of August. So we'll actually automatically enroll them. If they are, perhaps their health or law interest is a little bit newer, perhaps they didn't know when they applied, we can also get them added in at any time. They can just reach out to us and we can get them added in as well. There's no commitment, so there's no harm in being in it as well. And sophomore year, our sophomore year, the focus then shifts to how can we help students get experience in those professions, kind of try them out and see if they're the right fit for them. So our pre-health students are in what's called the pre-health learning community, PHLC 200. And our pre-law students are in the pre-law learning community, PLAW 200. And this year, the communities consist of online modules, once again, but also about three to four in-person sessions each semester. And our focus this year is on how, to get stu how students can get experience in these professions. professions. So we'll discuss things like shadowing. How can you shadow a professional in different areas of interest you have? What are the resources for that? What should you do? What does that day look like? We'll talk about how to get volunteer experience. Volunteers are a great way to try and get different experience in a variety of different professions as well. We'll talk about undergraduate research and ways to seek that. We'll also discuss resumes. How do you put together a really nice polished resume you can use for these experiences? We'll discuss letters of recommendation. So things like how do you ask faculty for letters of recommendation? Who should write those? How many do you need for different things? How do you get to know your professors for letters of recommendation down the road? We'll also discuss internships and clinical experience. So as students get ready to head home for the summer, how can we help you perhaps find an internship or a paid work experience for the summer that'll help you get more experience in health sciences and law? And last, also how to research professional schools. So there are about 200 law schools in the country. How do you figure out which law school is the right one for you? How do you figure out which medical schools you wish to apply to as well? So we'll discuss those topics. And last, the third year is the junior or senior year, and this is the year of preparation. So our focus this year really shifts to actually helping students prepare for the actual application process for these professional programs. So we have a series of profession-specific seminars. And once again, it's about online modules and about three to four in-person sessions each semester. And our focus this year is on things like the actual application process specifically. So things like entrance exam. What is the entrance exam for medical school? When do you take it? How do you prepare for it? We'll discuss those topics. We'll discuss how you navigate the application services for these programs. When do those open up? When are the applications due? Well, the timeline, once again, when are things due? When should you be applying? We'll discuss how do you write a personal statement? What does that look like? How do you write a statement for dental school or for law school? What's involved in that? And also interview skills. How do you prepare for your interviews for medical school or dental school or pharmacy school? couple special notes with our communities I wanted to mention. One is for pre-pharmacy. So our pre-pharmacy path here at Creighton is a little bit unique in that students can actually enter pharmacy school after just two years of undergraduate study. So for our pre-pharmacy students, our three-year plan of explore, experience, and prepare doesn't work quite so well. So for our pre-pharmacy students, we have two special seminars, PRX 100 and PRX 200, and we do all the same things, just condensed into two years instead of three. So our pre-pharmacy students get all the same experiences, just in a little bit more accelerated format based upon their undergraduate plan. Also for other pre-health areas, optometry, veterinary medicine, chiropractic medicine, speech language pathology, there are a lot of others out there. Although those are not specifically professional programs we have here at Creighton, we absolutely have students that pursue those as pre-professional paths during their time here. And we always have students each year who apply to optometry school and veterinary schools. We work with those students individually to really help them make sure they have the advising that they need and to figure out which community best aligns with their goals as well. So there are a lot of similarities in the end. Shadowing, volunteering, personal statements apply regardless of which program you're in. So we work individually with those students to make sure that they're on track as well. Some additional resources I'd like to mention with regards to pre-professional. We're very fortunate here at Creighton because we have a number of professional programs right here on campus. So we have a medical school, a dental school, a law school. We have a physician assistant program that just began. They're taking their first applications right now for their class that will enter next summer, 2019. And we have a pharmacy school, a physical therapy program, and an occupational therapy program. So we have a large number of professional programs right here on our main campus. 
So the nice thing for our pre-professional students is it gives them incredible access to the students in those programs and to the faculty that teach in those programs. So all of our pre-professional students at Creighton have a chance to shadow a professional school student for part of a day. So if a pre-medicine -pre student wants to see what medical school is like, they can actually sign up to shadow a medical school student for half of a day, or a law school student, or a pharmacy school student, see what their day is like, what their classes are like, and what their experience is like. Also, the faculty for these programs are oftentimes frequent facilitators for our communities as well. So I mentioned the Pharmacy Skills Lab, where we have 30 different stations set up. That's all done by our pharmacy faculty. Um, our law school professor, one of our law school professors, comes in and does a big law school admission test presentation and, and practice session for us. Um, we also have our dental school students do a big panel for us. Um, so we have some great activities and some great accessibility to the faculty and students in those programs, which really helps give our pre-professional students some good insight information to those programs as well. So it's a great advantage for us. Faculty staff advising, I mentioned advising a little bit ago. We have great advising for students, the way it's set up. Students have that dedicated faculty advisor, but then they also have us to go a little bit more in depth on some of the pre health and pre law topics that they may have. We have a wonderful partnership with CHI Health. CHI Health is one of the large health systems here in Omaha. Um, and CHI Health is also where our teaching hospital is located for Creighton School of Medicine. CHI has a great shadowing program for college students, so our Creighton undergraduate students can go online and request to shadow a wide variety of healthcare professionals um, across different locations in Omaha. So some, some great partnerships there. And also alum alumni networking. We have really very dedicated alumni here at Creighton who are always willing to give a hand up to our current students. So it makes it a lot easier for us if a student wants to visit, for example, with an optometrist or perhaps an, an attorney, we can always find those individuals students can visit with and learn more about that person, how they got to their profession from going to Creighton as well. So just some resources I wanted to mention. Good afternoon, everyone. As Julie mentioned, my name is Jeremy Fisher. I'm the director of the Career Center here at Creighton, which is our third and final piece of the, the edge. Uh, we specialize mostly in the current professional development of students, whether they're pre-professional or not. Um, we have a lot of students coming in um, with a certain plan or a certain uh, interest, and many students um, are still exploring and discerning what they want to do for their career. We work with students from freshman to senior year. Uh, we serve both undergraduate and graduate uh, students here at Creighton uh, for the College of Arts and Sciences, College of Nursing, and our Hydro College of Business. Uh, so the nice thing about our career center as well is that our career services are available for life for alumni. So once they graduate, even you know, 5, 10, 15 years down the road, uh, they can always come back to utilize our services at, at Craigie's uh, Career Center. Our themes of the Career Center are explore, develop, and connect. So again, we help students identify and explore uh, potential paths through a variety of ways, whether it's career counseling, career coaching. We have uh, career assessments to help identify their, their skills, their values, their interests, and strengths. As Julie mentioned, the alumni networking piece has been huge for us as well in terms of that exploration phase as well. Uh, we have a lot of alumni that are willing to do informational interviews with students. And we have a, a, a great staff of career counselors in the Career Center, but sometimes the best career advice comes from talking to people actually doing those jobs. So whether it's in, in healthcare law or business or nonprofit or a variety of different fields, um, we, our alumni are very supportive to talk to our, our freshmen and sophomores and other students in terms of their career and their industries. So, um, that's a big part of what we do. The development piece comes more on the career and professional development side. So making sure they have the skills and tools necessary to be successful in the job search in terms of internships and research opportunities, full-time employment, as well as our graduate professional school assistance that we offer. Um, we help them write professional resumes, write cover letters. For those that are pursuing professional schools, we also help review and critique their personal statements. So that's a great service that we offer uh, through the Creighton uh, Career Center and through the EDGE. Career events and networking. Uh, we offer a variety of recruiting events and networking events with not only alumni, but employers in various industries and corporate, nonprofit, government, and healthcare. Uh, we have our career fair every semester. Uh, we also offer a couple of virtual career fairs every year as part of our, um, our Big East Conference affiliation with the other uh, nine uh, Big East schools. Uh, we have one of those in the fall, one of those in the spring. Uh, we offer things like professional etiquette dinners every spring, so helping teach students how to dress professionally, um, teach them dining etiquette, teach them how to introduce themselves, how to practice their elevator uh, speech and pitch, and kind of talk about that those networking uh, pieces to help develop their communication skills and confidence. Um, along the same lines, in terms of interview prep and mock interviews, our office does hundreds and hundreds of mock interviews every year with students um, for internship opportunities and employment, as well as professional schools. So, um, pre-med, pre-pharmacy, et cetera. A lot of those professional schools that require interviews as part of their, their application process. So 
that are very customized by industry or by, by area. So we're, we're targeting specific questions that we know employers are looking for. We know those, um, those admissions representatives are looking for in those interview processes. And then obviously we help teach them um, how to search for jobs and internships, but also help them along the way. So that's that, more of that career coaching model. Uh, we will keep them engaged and work with them throughout their time, throughout that process, to make sure that they have those contacts to follow up with with recruiters or alumni, and, and making sure they're following up and sending thank yous after, after interviews and things like that, that are very important to a student's success in terms of uh, their success for after graduation. So those are our core services that we offer, uh, but uh, three of our signature programs that we offer for students, um, again, that they can do from freshman year through senior year. Uh, we have two four-year career development programs, and one is called the Edge Scholars Program, and then the other is the Career Portfolio Program. So if any uh, families in here have students in the higher college of business, the Career Portfolio Program is a, is a four-year program dedicated specifically for our business students. For those uh, arts and sciences and nursing students, uh, the Edge Scholars Program is the equivalent of that. So, um, students uh, beginning their spring semester uh, for EDGE Scholars can actually sign up for a course called EDGE 102. Uh, it's that Introduction to Discernment and Experiential Learning course, and it's really designed for students who are not going to be joining one of our pre-health and pre-law learning communities. So students that are still, maybe still deciding on their major or their career path, um, who want to do some exploration activities, we do a variety of things in that class to kind of help get them uh, a little bit more focused. So things like career assessments and informational interviews, and we do employer and industry site visits, um, we do um, resume writing, we do mock interviews, we do a lot of those things that I talked about earlier, but in a programmatic course uh, that they can start with. Um, the EDGE internship program is actually an on-campus internship program that we have uh, here at Creighton. Uh, if you think of Creighton University as an employer, uh, we employ over 3,000 employees, and we have a public relations and communications department. We have a fund in performing arts. We have a library. We have health sciences. We have a general counsel, a legal department. We have finance, IT, marketing. We have human resources, um, and a variety of different other areas that students can gain really valuable hands-on experiences. Uh, these are all paid internships. They're $12.75 an hour uh, that students can do either freshman year through senior year. Uh, but there is a three-term limit that students can do an on-campus internship through this program. So they can't work more than a fall, spring, or summer term, for example. So um, the reason that we set it up that way is we want them to gain experience, but we want to get them off campus to gain those valuable experiences as well. So um, we'll show you a couple of different examples of how some students have utilized our services and programs, but the value of those on-campus internships is um, it helps develop those workforce readiness skills that employers are looking for to help develop their resume, uh, make it more marketable for those uh, even more competitive and significant internship experiences. So um, that has nothing to do with federal work study. Uh, if the student is federal work study eligible, uh, that is a completely separate program. Um, but if they are federal work study eligible, then they would use those federal funds towards that fee and then Creighton would pay the difference to get them that 1275 an hour. So, um, but we, um, we can talk a little more about you know, some of that information and programs at the end here if you have questions about that. But, um, we, you probably have seen some of this in our admitted student days and some of our admissions materials. I believe what you have in the, the brochures are actually even from the class of 2016. Uh, this is our recent, most, most recent class of 2017 outcomes. What I want to reiterate with this is, is that no matter what your student majors in, they can be, they can be successful, and especially what they do outside of the classroom in, in terms of developing real-world experience. So internships and research and study abroad getting some leadership experiences or doing some service lead, uh, learning and, and so forth. And a variety of different ways that we help students um, you know, develop their resume and their professional skills outside of the classroom. But overall, we had a 99% success rate and in terms of all three of our undergraduate colleges. And 61% of our, our graduates in class 2017 went directly into the workforce. And then 33% overall went to graduate professional school. 5% went to a postgraduate volunteer program, a service program for a one or two year program, things like Peace Corps, Judge Volunteer Corps, AmeriCorps, et cetera. But if you break that down by college, you'll see a, a stark difference between arts and sciences, nursing, and business. And in arts and sciences, and the reason that we spend so much time talking about pre-professional advising and development is over 54% of our arts and sciences students go to graduate professional school. So that's a much higher percentage than most universities in the country. Uh, whereas in nursing and business, 97% of our nursing grads went directly into the workforce and about 80, 85% of our business grads went directly into the workforce. So that's why we offer different programs for different interests, uh, whether, there's, um, whether our students are interested in, like I said, professional school or various industries or various career opportunities. We have a variety of programs that help make sure they're going to be successful. So here's the catch, um, and this is where we need your help as parents and guardians, is that 
our services are never required for students. So we have amazing programs and services that can help students be successful, but we need your help advising and encouraging to ask them when they're home for fall break or Christmas break or spring break or in the summer, is, have you been to the edge? Have you been to the career center? So um, trust me, our faculty do the same thing. So, you know, their faculty advisors will encourage them and they refer students you know, a lot to us. And between the two of our, our main areas, we see thousands of students every year. So a lot of students do utilize these services, but uh, it's good for um, parents to be aware of these as well. For our arts and sciences and business students, uh, we actually go into their freshman seminar program, so they're gonna hear the same information that you're all hearing as well. So if they say, I've never heard about the Career Center of the Edge, then that's a lie. <laughs> so, okay. Um, so where do they go after they graduate? Um, they're just starting college, and now we're talking about where they're going afterwards. Um, on average, about 40, 40 states represented up every year. That's generally speaking you know, pretty strong in terms of our national outreach. Uh, right now, less than 20% of our students are from Nebraska and 80% are from all over the country. So, um, so if you look at the darker blue areas, obviously a big concentration here in the Midwest with Nebraska, Minnesota, Missouri, Colorado, Illinois, Iowa, even in California, that's, that's a heavy state for us as well for where they go afterwards. Um, and then the mid-tier states, the, the medium blue are gonna be like Texas, Arizona, uh, Washington, North Carolina, New York, uh, Wisconsin, Kansas, et cetera, and then if you're from Idaho or New Orleans or Maine, uh, don't freak out. We'll still help your students get opportunities there as well. Uh, we just didn't have any students this particular year getting opportunities there, so or pursuing opportunities there. Uh, and that ranges anywhere from you know one or two students up to 45 students in some states. So you know, we have a graduating class a little over a thousand students every year. So. Um, Lastly, uh, I thought we'd uh, give you a few quick examples and answer any questions you have here at the end, but um, in terms of how some students have utilized our services, and I've got a couple of quick examples of how a business student, arts and sciences student, used our career center, and then Julie's going to wrap up with one of our free professional or free health students. Uh, but this is Shia Gassimedia. She is a recent graduate from our May 2018 class, so she just graduated last month. She was from Sacramento, California. She came into Creighton um, you know, knowing that she had an interest in healthcare administration or the business side of healthcare. And she ended up, did, uh, ended up minoring in that still, but um, it was because of an experience she had on campus here, even in the Hyder College of Business at Creighton, where she did an on-campus internship her freshman year, one of those on-campus internships that I was mentioning, where she did a lot of marketing and analytics stuff. And she really enjoyed that. Um, she kind of utilized that experience to get an even better internship off campus for sophomore year where um, uh, there's an Omaha office of Yahoo and Facebook and LinkedIn here but um, she got a really competitive internship as a sophomore that typically juniors get um, but she got an ad operations internship in Omaha where she worked fall spring and summer at Yahoo she utilized that experience to reiterate her interest in marketing and, and so forth and I think along the way through her business studies she actually picked up another double major in human resources management I think that was just Again, more of that interest on the healthcare or the business side of you know, management. But she ended up double majoring marketing, human resource management, minor in health administration and policy. After her sophomore year, again, she kind of wanted to stay in that marketing analytics realm. And, and being from California, she knew she wanted to get an internship back home, uh, which she was able to at LinkedIn's headquarters in Sunnyvale. And uh, she did an internship very similar to what she did at Yahoo as an ad operations intern. But uh, she actually got a full time job offer this past summer or last summer. Uh, before her senior year and took a full-time employment with them. She's probably working there right now in their business leadership program. But uh, she came in again every year, almost every semester to the Career Center, met with Heather Doring, our assistant director for business career programs. She did, again, we helped her with her resume, her interview skills, interview prep, we helped her secure these, you know, these two internships really was probably more with us and then she, because she developed these experiences, she got this one sort of on her own, even though we helped her get connected to some of our employers and alumni on the Bay Area. Um, so that's just one quick example. And then uh, um, a different example, Jason Brown uh, from Milwaukee. Um, he knew he wanted to major in English, just had no idea what he wanted to do with his English major. So we helped him uh, kind of explore different paths and opportunities, and he was a great student to work with some of our, our arts and sciences career counselors. And the way our career center is structured is we have two career counselors dedicated to the higher health and business, and we have three career counselors dedicated for arts and sciences and nursing. So we have very specialized career counselors for our, by college. Uh, but uh, Jason came in, um, ended up again doing a similar story, kind of did an on-campus internship experience through a, a program and was able to work pretty closely with our board of directors and our university president as a presidential fellow. And then while he loved uh, working in that in higher ed administration, he just wasn't sure that's the path he wanted to still go down, you know, 100%. 
um, for when he was um, looking at career opportunities for uh, post graduation. But um, later on in his academic career, he ended up um, wanting to, you know, came into our office and wanted to try an internship in business and just see if he liked that. So uh, came to one of our career fairs. He landed a really good internship in a sales program at Arthur J. Gallagher. Did very, very, very well. Um, probably. He probably would have gotten a job offer if, chose, if he would have chosen to stay with them. But although he enjoyed business and sales, he just kind of reiterated his his uh, interest and in, and in more on that education side. So you know, because of that experience, he at least gave him some something to contrast a little bit. Uh, but um, he started coming into senior year, met with uh, Raven, one of our career counselors for arts and sciences, and say, you know, I might want to take a gap year and maybe do a post year of service, the graduate uh, post grad year of service. So. Started looking at opportunities, um, explored uh, Jesuit Volunteer Corps, and that's what he's actually doing right now today, and is doing that for about a year, and then he is going to pursue graduate school and a master's program in educational administration. So, um, so that's just kind of a couple of quick ex examples of how some of our students have utilized our career center services, and Julie will wrap up here with, with the edge. And our last example is one of our pre-professional students. This is Caitlin, and Caitlin just finished her junior year here at Creighton, so she'll be a senior year, she'll be a senior next year. Um, she is an exercise science major with a dance minor, and she's on a pre-dentistry path. And so she's a wonderful example of a student who really emphasizes you can major in anything and go on to professional programs. There's no one specific major that's best for different programs. There's no one specific major we recommend. You can major and minor in any subject and go on to professional school. Um, but while Caitlin's been here, she's been involved in some wonderful things. Um, she's been a volunteer for the Justice Walking Hospice Volunteer Program, which is through our campus ministry office here at Creighton. So it's given her really a wonderful opportunity to serve her fellow, um, fellow man as well here at Creighton. Um, she is also worked as a sterilization technician at Troy Family Dental um, back in her hometown. So that gave her a great chance to get some paid experience, see how a dental office works, um, see what the ins and outs are, see what the day is like for a dentist as well. So some great shadowing plus paid experience in a dental clinic. She's also shadowed quite extensively at Creighton Dental Clinic, and Creighton Dental School has a clinic that serves about 13,000 patients a year here on campus. And so she took advantage of that experience and got a great chance to shadow some dental school students and dental school faculty as they work directly with patients. And lastly, she also did a number of service and justice trips. This one to again emphasize her commitment to her community, to giving back to others, and to serving others as well, both in Ohio and in New Mexico. So she's had some great experiences here at Creighton. Um, as a pre-professional student, she's been involved in our learning community. So she did the pre-health information group her freshman year, the pre-health learning community her sophomore year, and that PDDDS 300 pre-dental school seminar in her junior year. She's met with Linda Dunn, one of my colleagues, who is a pre-health advisor here at Creighton, each semester to make sure she's on path, on the right path for dental school. And she's actually right now in the process of working on her application for dental school as well. So we are all rooting for her as well. <laughs>